This is the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, we need to get a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run along the edges to pop off the catches. The back housing can now be lifted up from the right to the left, but be careful since the flex cable for the fingerprint reader is still attached to the main board. There are 16 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Let's take a closer look at the top plastic cover. The glass camera lens can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off, so you don't have to take apart the phone to replace those. There's an antenna flex cable over here, as well as the NFC antenna below it. Here's a look at the other side. We'll start off by disconnecting the battery cable, followed by the rest of the flex cables. The back housing is made of plastic. The fingerprint reader is mounted to the side of the back housing, and that can be replaced by just pulling it out. There's some graphite film on the bottom to help transfer heat, as well as numerous antenna flex cables around the border. There are also two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board that need to be disconnected by just popping them off. Here's a better look at the 13 megapixel front facing camera. The main board can now be lifted up and removed. On the main board, there's a 2 megapixel depth camera, a 50 megapixel primary, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone located on the top, an LED flash by the primary camera, and a liquid damage indicator, which is that white sticker. There's also copper tape on the shields to help transfer heat. The SIM and memory card readers located on the back of the board, as well as the proximity sensor, and the connector for the primary camera. There's also more copper tape on the back shields. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see thermal paste on top of the RAM and processor, as well as this chip over here. Now this is where it gets interesting. Samsung has finally adopted an adhesive pull pouch for the battery. I'm hoping this is something they'll be using on all their phones moving forward. This is going to make battery replacements much easier. And the thing I love about the adhesive pull pouches, they're designed to be reused. So you won't have to apply any adhesive or any other glue to the replacement battery. You can just reuse this pouch. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Here's a look at the speaker assembly, and there's a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the opening. And here's the speaker itself. Once the speaker assembly has been removed, we can see that this flex cable connects both the screen and the subboard to the main board. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back housing as well as the bottom and top covers, and then you'd have to disconnect this flex cable from the main board, as well as the subboard, at which point you can heat up the screen to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen, making sure we run these flex cables back to the opening of the mid-frame, and reassemble the phone. Now the two other ends of the coaxial cable, as well as this flex cable, need to be disconnected from the subboard. The primary microphone is located in between the headphone jack and the charger port. There's also another liquid damage indicator sticker and the rubber gasket around this connector. Here's a look at the other side. 
The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner and is held down with some adhesive. And the same goes for the earpiece speaker which is located on top. The flex cable for the volume keys and power buttons is located on this side. So if you needed to replace that, you'd have to just gently peel it off. And finally, there's one more liquid damage indicator sticker over here, which goes underneath the SIM reader. For the repairability score, I give this phone an 8 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's put back together, power on the phone, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.